Hey everybody, uh, it's Mr. MathBog here, and this lesson is we're doing segment lengths and midpoint. We're also I'm showing you the uh, the Pythagorean theorem also, just to, it it helps us prove um, uh, the distance formula, that, which is part of this lesson here. So so here, explain why uh, the square root of three squared plus four squared does not equal three plus four. Okay, well, order of operations uh, says that we have to square those numbers first, and then we have to add them together second. So we have to square the numbers inside, and then so 3 squared is 9, and then 4 squared is 16, and then we have to add those two numbers together to get 25. So the square root of 25 equals 5. Up here, this is 7, so 5 doesn't equal 7. So that's why, you guys, we've got to square them first and then add them together. All right, so here we have a right triangle. It's a right triangle because there's a right angle right there, and that right angle is shown by this red box right there, okay? So if you have a right triangle, you have two legs, and you have what's called the hypotenuse. And it doesn't matter. These are both legs right here, and that's the hypotenuse. And then uh, there's uh, the Pythagorean theorem. If you guys ever seen The Wizard of Oz, uh, the scarecrow gets a brain, and when he gets a brain, he states the Pythagorean theorem, and he makes a mistake. Anyways, uh, you got to be a math teacher to understand the mistake. So anyways, the sum of the squares of the legs, so if I square this one and square this one, and sum means add, so the sum of the square of the two legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's put some letters in here. We'll do this letter is A, this is B, this is C. So, so the Pythagorean theorem just says A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I bet some of you guys have heard that before. So that uh, leads us into the distance formula. The distance formula between any two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, is equal to uh, the square root of, uh, you subtract the x's and then square it, add the subtraction of the y squared, okay? And I like to say this, distance equals square root, and then I say, parentheses squared plus parentheses squared, and then you put minuses in the middle. Okay, distance equals square root parentheses squared plus parentheses squared minus is in the middle. Distance equals square root parentheses squared plus parentheses squared minus is in the middle. Okay, and then um, uh, you're going to need to know that, you guys. So that'll be on your SAT test. It'll be on any kind of AP test. They, they seem to love the Pythagorean theorem, which is the distance formula. That's how you get it from... So here, we'll use that here. Determine whether the given lengths have the same lengths and then justify your answer, okay? So they want to know, is AB the same length as CD? So we have to use the distance formula for AB and CD. So here's A. This A has coordinates to the left 4, up 4, so negative 4, 4. B has coordinate to the right 1, up 2, so that's 1, 2. C has coordinate to the right 2, up 3, 2, 3. And finally, D has coordinate 4, negative 2. Okay, so we're going to now use the distance formula for A, B, and C, D to see if they're congruent. Okay, here's a good old distance formula. Square root, parentheses squared plus parentheses squared minus is in the middle. Okay, so we're going to go... 4, so square root of 4 minus a minus 1 squared plus um, uh, 2 minus a, uh, this 4 squared, okay? And then we'll do the same thing for CD, okay? So there they are right there. So then uh, square root, let's go ahead and do 1 minus a minus 4 is 1 plus 4. This is 5 squared. Here this is going to be negative 2 squared, 2 minus 4. This is going to be 2 squared. This is going to be negative 5 squared, okay? So uh, here this is going to get me 25 plus 4. Here this is going to get me 4 plus 25. Remember, negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 5. So that's going to get us the square root of 29 on both of those. So those have both have the length of square root of 29. So since the length of AB equals the length of CD, so when you don't have that little segment above there, it's actually talking about the lengths. If you ever have an equal sign, you won't have the segment up here. See up here, they're just talking about the segment. There's no equal sign that's being involved up here, so they have a segment on top of it. So when you have an equal sign, there's no segment on top of that. Just some semantics on how to 
how to write this. So since AB equals CD, which equals root 29, then check it out. Then the segment AB and the segment CD have the same length. Okay, so if you have equal signs, take off that segment symbol. All right, they want us to do the same thing with these two guys. So there's the coordinates right there. So as long as we plug in the coordinates correctly and then use the distance formula correctly, we get square root of 26 for one of them and square root of 32 for the other. And so, so the length of EF does not equal the length of GH. Therefore, segment EF and segment GH do not have the same length. Okay. All right. So finding the midpoint, you guys. So the midpoint of a line segment is the point that divides the segment into two segments that have the same length. So this midpoint is dividing this segment PQ into two equal lengths. So this length right here is going to equal this length right here. In fact, this length is half of the whole length right there. Same with this side. Segment, uh, the length of MQ is equal to half the length of PQ. Okay, and then uh, so those tick marks right here, these little tick marks right here, those just physically show us uh, that this segment here equals this segment right here. The length of PM equals the length of MQ. So this M is the midpoint of segment PQ. Whoops, I made a little semantics error right there. There should be a little segment bar right there. Let me put that little dude in there, okay? Probably going to have to copy it there and paste it, yep. Okay, so, um, uh, well, that'll lead us into this, you guys. So, um, uh, a line, a plane, or anything that passes through this right here, if I put a ray through that, you know, I can draw a, a quick ray right here. Let me do an endpoint right here. Let me get a little bit bigger right here. And then just do a, a ray going through there right there. So here's a ray that goes through that. And as long as it goes through that right there, through that midpoint, it is called a segment bisector. So anything that goes through this, uh, this midpoint right here is called a segment bisector. So that ray is a segment bisector. All right, so finding the midpoint uh, by the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula is this. If M is the midpoint of, of AB, then M has the coordinates, and here's the coordinates of A, here's the coordinates of B. So the X value is the average of the two X's right here. So we add this X plus this X over 2, and then the Y coordinate is this Y plus this Y over 2. We just average the two X's. That's another one you need to put up into your friendly memory bank right there, okay? So if, uh, and then this says, um, uh, show that each statement is true. So we got to show that this is true. If segment PQ has these endpoints, negative 4, 1, and Q is 2, negative 3, then the midpoint of M, uh, of, I'm sorry, the midpoint M, which is of PQ, lies in quadrant 3. So we're going to use midpoint formula. Let's review what quadrant 3 is, okay? Here's our Y axes here going up and down. Here's our X axes going left and right right here. Okay, so this is quadrant one, both the X and Y are positive. Here in quadrant two, the X is negative, the Y is positive. Here in quadrant three, they're both negative right here. And in quadrant four, the X is positive and the Y is negative. Okay, so we're going to show uh, that the midpoint lies in this quadrant right here. But So let's go ahead and use a midpoint formula. There it is right there. So the midpoint is we just add this X plus this X over 2 and then add this Y plus this Y over 2. That's what that says right there. Okay, so negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. Okay, so that part checks. 1 plus negative 3 again is negative 2. So negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So the midpoint is negative 1. So since both x and y are negative, m is in uh, quadrant 3. So it's right about there, to the left 1, down 1, something like that, whatever the units are on that. So, so here's another one. If segment RS has these endpoints right here, then the midpoint of uh, m of segment RS lies on the y axis. Let's slide that up right here. Okay, so here's the y axis right here. So what happens on the y axis, the x coordinate is zero. Okay, here on the x axis, the y coordinate is zero. So we're going to do the midpoint and show that the x uh, coordinate of our midpoint is zero. There's midpoint formula right there. So um, so uh, I add this one, 3 plus negative 3. Whoops, there should be a little negative 3 right there. I made another error on this. Your teacher ever make mistakes like I do? 
Uh, I do all the time. My kiddos catch me in it all the time. So negative three, um, uh, negative three plus, uh, or I'm sorry, three plus negative three, that's going to get us zero right there. And so since we get zero, sorry, I got to keep doing this. I send these lessons to other teachers in my district, so I got to correct them while I do it. Otherwise, I'll forget. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and 0 over any number is equal to 0. So since, uh, since the x-coordinate uh, is 0, then the midpoint lies right on the y-axis right there. Okay, let's see what else I got for us here. All right, so uh, explain why the distance formula is not needed to find the distance between two points that are horizontal or vertical. All right, well, if they're horizontal or vertical, uh, then they share the same x or the same y. So, so all you got to do to find the distance is you just count the spaces. So if there are four units on uh, ones on top of each other, just count the spaces. Same with left or right. You just got to count the spaces right there. All right, so when using the distance formula, does the order matter when you subtract the x and y coordinates? And explain, well, no, it doesn't, you guys, because if you subtract x1 minus x2 and square it, it's going to be positive. Uh, if you switch it around, x2 minus x1, let's say it's negative, and if you square it, it's going to be positive. Same with the y's. You know, for example, if we had these numbers right here, 5 minus 2, 5 minus 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9. Here over here, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 3 squared, which is also 9. So the order doesn't matter when you're doing distance formula, okay? So when using the midpoint formula, can we take either point x1, y1? I think they mean to be your first point, or, you know, you, can you switch them around? So does order matter on this? So, so order doesn't matter on, on this either. Uh, so uh, when using it, can we use either point? Yes, because x1 plus x2, you know, 3 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 3. So uh, when you divide it by 2, you're still going to get the same top number divided by 2. So can we do that? You betcha. Okay, if you are in my class, I would assign you guys that for your homework. Take care.